Do you think, quite generally, that we need to be afraid of AI? No. I think that when you, first of all, you should be afraid of things that you can uh, control when the fear helps you to control them. Okay. Right. So fear is an emotion. In emotions are involuntary reactions to in environmental things. And uh, so the fear can be justified or unjustified, and it can be helpful and unhelpful. And we should distinguish these things, right? So first of all, if you uh, are afraid of something that you cannot change, the fear might be debilitating but not helpful, right? Even though it might be justified. For instance, you might be afraid of a nuclear war, and uh, but there's nothing you can do about it because there is no way you can convince uh, the uh, leading governments to abolish nuclear weapons and so you just have to deal and have to deal with the probability that uh, there might be a nuclear war and there is also another thing I grew up with the fear of nuclear war in the 1980s it was pervasive everybody knew it was uh, very unlikely that we could get into the next century without a global nuclear war happening by accident because somebody would stupidly hit the button because they mistook some birds for an incoming missile and uh, there are also anecdotes about uh, things like this happening almost, right? And uh, now I think that maybe the fear was misplaced even because we did not understand that the people who actually deployed these nuclear weapons were actually working in a highly incentivized hierarchy. People were competent and smart. And the likelihood that something was happening was much smaller than the general public uh, led by worried scientists would expect. And the systems are built in such a way that it's much harder to make them go wrong than the general public might think, right? And so this is difficult as a layperson to see whether your fear is uh, justified or not justified about this. And so this leads us to these two aspects of being worried about AI. First of all, is your fear helpful? Does your fear lead you to behavior that improves, uh, the, uh, creates a high probability for a good outcome? or does it just debilitate you or lead you into a cult? And the other one, is it uh, appropriate in the sense that does it, uh, it, is it based on a good model of reality? And f there is uh, currently a movement of people that arguably was started by um, f people like Eliezer Jodkowski and uh, others who uh, reasoned themselves into the conclusion that when AI is going to happen and it's almost inevitable because it's valuable and it's physically possible, then it's almost inevitable that it's going to be agentic. And if it's agentic, it's going to be self-improving. And if it's self-improving, it's going to compete with us. And because it's smarter than us, it will win against us and we will all die. Mm -hmm. And uh, because uh, Elisa did not see a big hole in this chain of reasoning, uh, a lot of people who uh, have the mental property of believing in rational thoughts very, very literally freaked out and became started to panic and started a movement against AI and then now try to, for instance, uh, write regulation that ostensibly exists to make AI safer, but is actually designed to uh, hamstring AI research in such a way that it gets slowed down or stopped. That's, uh, that is the hope, because they don't believe that you can make AI safe. They actually believe that it's almost inevitable that AI will get better and better if you continue researching on it. So uh, it is going to inevitably destroy us all. And uh, on the other hand, you have people like, uh, say, Jan Nikun, who is leading AI research uh, at Meta, formerly Facebook, and uh, who argues, in some sense, that the present systems that we are seeing represent incremental research that is, which is true, arguably, that is scaling and capability um, along with the available hardware, mostly, which is also arguably true. And that uh, so far, when humans are building technology, they make decisions about what kind of technology they want to deploy. And uh, we can build systems that are safe. And it's in practice, it is, there has never been a problem to make AI safe. Uh, the problem is maybe that sometimes people might have business incentives, like at Boeing, to uh, forego safety procedures to get a uh, short-term gain. But it's not clear that this would happen with the present AI systems. And uh, we will probably be able, because the AI uh, research doesn't happen overnight, to anticipate many of the things that go wrong and all, all of the relevant things in time and uh, build safeguards as, they, as the danger happens. And so the idea of trying to make AI safe uh, now by producing uh, 
a regulation that makes AI research uh, more expensive and so on is probably not going to make AI safe because it might have the opposite effect. Really? The opposite effect could be that all the people who are responsible are no longer working on AI that could be dangerous. And only the irresponsible people are going to work on AI that could be dangerous. Because uh, f you will not stop a hedge fund from making the best AI that they can make when they, it, they earn more money with it and the AI model is deployed behind closed doors. You will probably not be able to convince uh, a rogue government to build a surveillance apparatus that uses better AI if it gives them advantage, or uh, to build weapons that allow you to prevail in a military conflict that you otherwise would lose and uh, die. Right, So you have these situations in the world. And if you uh, only leave AI research at the frontier to those who are not bound by any sense of responsibility and are working behind closed doors, uh, you are arguably headed uh, for a much more dangerous future than one where uh, research is happening without premature safeguards, but with an understanding that we are looking very hard to make the best possible and safest AI that we can make. Mm -hmm.